Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ, and today I wanna to talk about probably one of the most iconic lures in bass fishing, and that's the spinner bait. And not only that, I wanna talk about five big mistakes that a lot of anglers make with a spinner bait, so stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Before we get into the video, this video is brought to you by the Bass Hat, this hat that I'm wearing right now. It comes in a lot of different colors. It comes with a wooden bass patch on the top, one of the very few hats out there with wood on it, very unique, but if you wanna help support the channel, click that link below and purchase a bass hat. All right, let's get into the video, and again, today's video is about the spinner bait. Literally, if you have ever bought any fishing tackle in bass fishing at all, whether you're a beginner or super advanced, it seems like a spinner bait is probably in your tackle box. This is sold by the thousands in just about any store you go to, whether that's a, a Bass Pro Shop or a Dick's or a Walmart, you're gonna find spinner baits. And a spinner bait is a great lure, but it seems like a spinner bait has kind of died off over the years. So many guys have started fishing other lures like chatter baits and square bills or lipless crankbaits or whatever it may be that the good old faithful spinner bait has kind of died off. With that being said, back in the day, the lakes that you're fishing, actually a lot of them used to be a little bit muddier. A lot of them used to be newer lakes. They used to be a little bit muddier where maybe a spinnerbait shined a little bit. A spinnerbait can still catch bass. And the best thing about a spinnerbait is it's one of those lures that you can not only catch a lot of fish on, but you can catch some really, really big fish on. If you look at a spinnerbait, you know, you have blades here, but you also have basically a jig on the bottom and guess what a jig is the same thing it's a big fish bait but there are a lot of mistakes that guys make with a spinner bait the first mistake that i see a lot of anglers make with the spinner bait is not fishing it in warmer weather conditions warmer water conditions i feel like a lot of us think that a spinner bait is a great lure when it comes to cold water or cooler water you know you see a lot of guys throw the spinner bait during that pre-spawn time frame see a lot of guys throw a spinner bait in later fall, kind of in those cold water months. But during the summertime, it seems like a lot of guys put the spinnerbait down for whatever reason, but a spinnerbait can still be very effective under the right conditions during the summertime. Now, a couple of times that I like to use it during the summer, if I'm fishing any type of river system, you know, typically in a river system, you're gonna have off color water. You're gonna have some muddy water conditions. And throughout the entire year, a spinnerbait can be great in that situation. I typically like to use a white and chartreuse spinnerbait with some smaller Colorado blades in that situation. When guys are pitching up against the bank with soft plastics or throwing a square bill, you can be throwing a spinnerbait and catching some quality fish that they are missing. Another time I like to throw a spinnerbait during the summer is actually on offshore structure. Now we have actually seen Jacob Wheeler kind of do this a lot over the last couple of years. He's kind of thrown that spinnerbait off offshore, throwing a, a big spinnerbait, a one ounce, an ounce and a quarter spinnerbait offshore. This is a great presentation to catch a big bass. A lot of guys, when the fish go offshore during the summer, they're gonna pick up a deep diving crankbait, or they're gonna pick up a, a swim bait, or they might pick up some sort of football jig. But a spinnerbait is a bait that a lot of them, a lot of fish aren't seeing down there, and it represents what the bass are typically eating when they're offshore, and that's shad and or bait fish. Maybe you live up in a northern state where there's not too much shad, but there's a lot more perch in those areas, and if you put on a gold willow leaf spinner bait, that's gonna represent a perch really, really well. Another time I like to use a spinner bait is anytime I'm fishing extremely clear water with big smallmouth. You can literally cast a spinner bait out over a five foot, six foot, eight foot, 10 foot flat and bring that spinner bait as fast as you can. I mean, as fast as you can, just below the surface, and you can catch some giant smallmouth doing that. Mistake number two that a lot of guys make with a spinnerbait, and this is a little bit less of a mistake and actually more of a tip. When we go out there and we get bites on a spinnerbait, sometimes you'll have fish come up and hit a spinnerbait and miss it. So one of the things that a lot of us will typically do is put on a trailer hook. A trailer hook a lot of times will hook up with those fish, but I also think that sometimes a trailer hook can actually get in a way of the fish actually getting the main hook. Sometimes 
sometimes as that fish is coming to the bait, it hits that trailer hook first instead of getting the main hook. Now, another thing that I really like to do is actually add some sort of trailer to your bait. Instead of threading on that trailer hook, I'm actually just gonna thread on typically a grub style trailer. And I'm gonna put that up onto the spinner bait. Like you see here, that gives the fish a little bit something not only to hold on to, but to actually suck in. Now, you may actually look at this spinner bait and not necessarily love having a trailer on it. And guys, this is what I'm gonna tell you to do. This is kind of the tip. Regardless if you want your spinner bait to have a trailer or not, thread one on there and just simply cut off the tail. Now here you're gonna have a spinner bait. It looks similar to the spinner bait you get, but you have a chunk of plastic that's kind of up there threaded on the hook. And guys, this is what that chunk of plastic does. I've actually shared this before on the channel. I used to do tree work for a living. When we did tree work during the winter, we didn't have to worry so much about the wind because wind can go through a bare tree very easily, right? There's no foliage, there's no sail, there's nothing to grab onto that wind. Now, if you have a lot of leaves on that tree and you have a lot of wind, that's when you have a lot of tree branches coming down. Now, if you think about a spinnerbait as a tree, there's not a whole lot of foliage on your spinnerbait when it comes to just a skirt. When a fish goes to inhale that bait, a lot of times it's just trying to suck in basically a bare hook because that skirt is not providing a lot of volume. So if you add on just a little bit of a chunk of plastic, like the one that I have right here, that's gonna give that bass something to actually suck in when it goes to hit that spinnerbait. And it's going to suck that bait in a little bit better, allowing you to get a better hookup on your spinnerbait bait. So regardless if you want a trailer or not, at least put a chunk of plastic on there to help that fish suck that bait in a little bit better. Mistake number three that I see a lot of guys make with a spinner bait is a lot of them are simply going to cast it out there and reel it straight back into them. They're not really doing anything with the spinner bait. And I kind of talked about this when I talked about chatter baits. And I'm going to put these two baits kind of in a similar category where I really like to impart a little bit of action to my spinner bait from time to time. I don't want to just cast it out there and have a simple reel it back. What I like to do a lot with a spinner bait is hit it off cover. A spinner bait is a tremendously weedless bait. You can hit it off grass, you can hit it off dock posts, you can really bring it through heavy cover like brush piles and lay downs very effectively. So try to hit that spinner bait off cover and then pop that bait off there causing a reaction strike. If you don't have anything to really hit that spinner bait off of, what I like to do is simply pop the blades. As I'm reeling that spinner bait in, I'm simply just gonna pop my rod tip, right? And that's gonna make those blades flare out for just a minute, and then you're gonna start reeling it again, and those blades are gonna start spinning. Now, that is a great way to trigger a bass. If it's following that spinner bait, not sure if it's gonna hit it, and you pop those blades, and those blades flare out all of a sudden, bam, that's when that bass is going to get it. So impart a little bit of action to your spinner bait. Don't just simply reel it back in, give it a twitch every now and then, hit it up against some cover. The next mistake that I see a lot of guys make with a spinner bait is we all kind of go out there and pick up that same spinner bait and we go out there and we make the same cast and we reel it the same way. Now what I'm gonna say is speed is everything when it comes to a spinner bait. There are times, like I talked about earlier, if you're fishing for smallmouth, if you're out there and you're just casting that bait out and reeling it in at kind of a medium pace, you actually may not get any bites at all. It's almost like the smallmouth can see that bait too well, especially in clear water situations. So sometimes you really have to bring that bait. You really have to speed it up, make it go as fast as you can. Now, sometimes you actually want the opposite. You actually want to be almost dragging that spinner bait across the bottom. A lot of times in the pre-spawn, a spinner bait is a great bait to fish. So sometimes I like to really just kind of slow roll that spinner bait across the bottom, kind of on some 45 degree angle banks or even some creek channel banks. Really just slow roll that thing just on there on the bottom. And really that slow retrieve is gonna get you a big bite. Now, real quick side note, when it comes to spinner baits, guys, I want you to know that a spinner bait 
bait is a fairly conditional bait, meaning you really need the right conditions in order for a spinner bait to work. I feel like a lot of guys, you know, maybe first start out with a spinner bait, they go to their local pond, or maybe you just go on a really still day and you don't catch anything on a spinner bait, you get upset, you throw it to the side, you never pick it up again. Now there are conditions that a spinner bait works really, really well. And I wanna just discuss those real quick before we get into the last tip. So conditions that I really like to fish a spinner bait in is what I'm gonna call noisy conditions. Now there are a few things that can make water noisy. Now, now, one thing is water color. The more off color the water is, the more noisy I'm going to call it. So if you have muddy water conditions, if you have really highly stained water conditions, those are great times to throw a spinner bait. A spinner bait has a ton of vibration. The fish can track it down in that muddy water really, really well. Now, if you're fishing clear water situations, really clean water, you still want noisy conditions. But in this case, the noise is really gonna come from the wind. So if you're fishing clear water, you really want windy conditions or maybe even some really cloudy conditions in order for a spinner bait to work. Typically though, wind is your best friend in clear water if you're throwing a spinner bait. Now let's get on to tip number five. Tip number five is about saving money. Who doesn't want to save money when you're out there fishing a spinner bait? And there's a lot of really nice spinner baits out there on the market and they might cost eight, nine, ten dollars. And if you want a spinner bait to work in a lot of different situations, you might have to pick up several different types of spinner baits. So what I like to do is I actually like to build my spinner baits and I don't like to do the entire process I kind of like to do what I call the cheating way this to me is probably the most efficient when I'm out there on the water. It takes very little setup time. Some guys can save a lot of money building spinner baits from scratch. I don't necessarily love to do that. What I like to do though, is I like to get on fishingskirts.com and I like to use the Boss spinner bait heads that are already painted. And I get a number of these. You can pick them up at a fairly decent price. So then I pick up skirts and I pick up some blades and then just the little parts that you need to make a spinner bait with and that's how you can save a lot of money it really ends up making your spinner baits cost you know three and four dollars as opposed to seven eight nine dollars so you're saving a lot of money while also having a high quality spinner bait and the best thing about that is you can really kind of critique a spinner bait you can build a spinner bait for the conditions that you want for instance here's a spinner bait you can't really buy it too much in the stores you know this is one that i like to use during the shad spawn i actually have three willow leaf blades on this particular bait i built this i actually don't even have a skirt on this bait i just fish it with a kitech style swim bait on the back so if you use those five tips i think you're going to save some money you're going to start catching a lot more fish on a spinner bait one thing that i didn't talk a whole lot about in this video was spinner bait blades and when i like to use certain blades for certain conditions so if you guys want to see a video that I actually put together all about spinnerbait blades you can click on this video right here it's going to talk to you all about blade configurations and what i like to do i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give it a like comment below and subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video